We Talk is a production of BFAC On Air. Welcome back, everyone, to We Talk. We Talk. Where Dominic and Jenna, well, we talk. We talk. We haven't talked in a while. It's been a little while. I mean, we talk all the time. We talk a lot. But we haven't. Sometimes we should just, like, walk into a studio. Yeah. Press the record button. And just, just stare talk. at each other. Oh, <laughs> just, stare at each other. Yes. just look at each other. Just look. Was that interesting, audience? Was that good? <laughs> no, just talk. I like, forget just, what like a are. topic, and then just talk. I think nothing we, else. I think that's what we said we were going to do at the beginning, and then we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't we do that? I don't know. I don't either. Life, times, things. All of them. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, but today, today we got to talk to somebody who's very exciting oh, and lovely. It was, it was so interesting. Yes, we talked to Paul Reiser. Mm-hmm. You probably know Paul Reiser from uh, I, I, I I don't know. What do you think the most known thing that audiences who might be listening would know Paul Reiser? From? I think most people, if from earlier years, <laughs> would know him from Mad About You. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're a younger audience, you might know him from Stranger Things. That's true. So I think those kind of are probably the two big pulls. And uh, Beverly Hill Cops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say Mad About You was going to be my oh, guess. Oh, you were and just going to say one thing? I was going to say one thing, but I really enjoy I your uh, plethora of options Thank for you. people to choose from with that. But I th- yeah, I do think generationally perhaps different. And I think that is probably why... Paul Reiser is so beloved between generations of human beings. Agreed. Yeah. Well, just... And animals, probably. Really, any mammal, I would think, <laughs> probably <laughs> likes Paul Reiser. <laughs> Not where I thought you were going. <laughs> Not mad at it. Just didn't think we were there. <laughs> yeah, no. The thing I love about his work mm-hmm. is that it it really has an emphasis on Human, like our shared journeys. If you look yes. at things like Bye Bye Love, which we talk about a little bit in here, and you look at things like Mad About You, yeah, uh, you look at these, even the, the original Mad About You and then the reboot the of reboot. Mad about, about You, you get these these journeys that we're on. And then you've got his his books, which we, we didn't get a ton of. We talked about his new book, which yeah. comes out this uh, the middle of this year. It's all about the human beings and our journeys here. And he talks a little bit about in the episode how the universal things are the things that everyone kind of goes through and right. they can they can connect with. Right. And that's what's going to keep you immersed in like what this person is doing and in the story that they're telling and whatever yeah. format is like you feel connected to it. Yeah. Yeah. I... I grew up watching Paul Reiser. Me all too. The time. Yeah. And so it was really a thrill to get to talk to him today. And he's so handsome. <laughs> As he does claim. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I, he is. He is. So totally. It's done it again. <laughs> um, and and he's, he was so nice too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a joy to talk to. Yeah. So Paul Reiser is at the Batavia Fine Arts Center yes. on March the 8th of 2024. If it's not March 8th yet, at the time the show starts, you should try to come see the show. That's, t- <laughs> that's t- you mean this show, the, the We Talk episode. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, yes, you should totally come. You can get your tickets at uh, BataviaFineArtsCenter.org. That's center spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. Mm-hmm. Because we fancy. That's right. We totally are fancy. But not too fancy. Not overly fancy. Not I like, know. I got to put on my, my bow tie and go out to the theater. <laughs> 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 the theatre? Well, you know, if you spell it T-R-E, that's... Oh, you, you know. not theatre. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say that, but let, I like it. Well, then I should coin it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Done. All right, folks. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, perhaps... Uh, you probably don't want to hear us talk anymore to each other. Yeah, you don't. You want to hear us talk to Paul Reiser. You want to hear us talk to Paul Reiser, so... And he's got a lot of great stuff to say. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us while we We talk talk to to Paul Reiser. Reiser. So one of the things that people might not know about you is 
how extremely multi handsome handsome <laughs> yes no, they yeah. should they, know that i was gonna say they, they should yeah it that. doesn't always come out yeah okay <laughs> it reads that's uh, a given <laughs> is uh your your multifacetedness you went to school and your degree your original degree is not necessarily in what people might think it is in is it I am a licensed neurosurgeon. There you and you go. know what? <laughs> uh, I, I'm more of a freelance. I'm not really licensed, yeah. but I like to go over to people in a mall. And, and even if they don't have any illness <laughs> yep. or uh, frailty, I say, you know what? What's it going to cost you? Take and the a shot. Best? And then, I, and, and then where, if it goes badly, I just drive off. <laughs> and the best part of your show when you come and do a show and you travel around is when you take an audience member up onto yes. the stage and yeah. you, you do some experiments. It's like the opening scene in the movie Poor Thing, uh, <laughs> but in color. <laughs> That's it. By the way, not to bad, I would never bad mouth a movie. I am not man enough to make it through that movie. I, I, I've taken three stabs at it. Stabs is the wrong word. Three attempts at it. And I, I can't, I can't, I can't watch. I can't watch things like that. You get, just, you'll get I, through two, it. Yeah, yeah, you think so. I'm done. I just I'm I put done. my knees up so I can't. It looks like I'm watching, and then I close my eyes and you my just ears. Squint so your there's knees. anything yeah. where it's like. Oh. So here's the thing. So my wife, who I adore, just so we're clear at the outset, I didn't want to particularly see the movie because I had heard. I said it's not. The, she said I, it's an Oscar movie nominated movie. We need to have seen it. I want to have <laughs> seen it. So we watched it. We turned it on, and my wife is doing this. I go. That doesn't count as have seen. <laughs> it counts. I think it counts. Yeah, no, that, you, you didn't see it. You saw your palm. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. Uh, let's get back to my first question oh, later. Man. Sorry, go. I, no, Sorry. I, no, because I I, I, you right just me. mentioned something, and I feel like that is so much of who you are. Your, your life, your comedy, the, the shows you're in, they have so much to do with life. And they relate so well to other people. Um, well, uh -huh. there's a few ex there's a few exceptions, hopefully, in, in your breadth of work that hopefully don't relate to our lives. But yes, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least yet, anyhow. <laughs> um, but but why is it so important? Why do people relate so much more? And how do you know what stories or life you want to bring <laughs> to the art of something at different times in our history? It, it sounds very highfalutin when you say it like that. <laughs> uh, you know, here somebody once asked me, "Where do you get your material from for your stand up, stand up, and and for anything?" And I, and I tell them the honest truth, which is this: I'm not smart enough to make anything up. So, so all I can do is I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you the conversation I just had in my house with my wife, with my kids, with yeah. my neighbor. Yeah. And. And luckily, uh, people in the audience are going, yes, I just had that conversation with my wife, with my husband, with my kids. Yeah. So, you know, there's an old saying that whatever is the most personal is invariably also the most universal. Yeah. So I have been lucky and fortunate that when I talk about stuff that strikes me as funny or rich or frustrating, <laughs> it, it turns out it ain't just me. Yeah. And that's really the real fun of doing stand up is like when people are laughing, it's because they go, oh, thank God it's not just me. <laughs> right. Know? And I'm on stage going, oh, I'm so happy to hear you laugh because I was afraid <laughs> yeah, it was right. just me. But yeah. this seems to be a thing. OK, good. Yeah, because the truth is funny. Now, yes. I went back. I wanted to go back as far as I possibly could and look for the first stand-up thing I could find. And I went back and I found your Johnny Carson 1982 yeah. um, stand-up. And in it, you said, health is not as important as material goods. And Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I remember I, the joke. Yeah, and I find it very interesting because I... By the way, it's yeah. not, not funny when you say it. Like that. <laughs> People are going, boy, this guy don't sound funny. Why would I buy a ticket? Oh, I just made no. his joke. It's you know, it's that's a good not... thing people don't pay to come see me. That's the important yeah, thing that's to take away. If an example of Rise's material, I think I'm going to sell these tickets yeah. right back. Didn't quite land the no, same no, way. No, no, no. No, you didn't set it up in any way, but go ahead with your point. Um, so, I, and then I've seen some of your recent stand up that you're doing as well. And I feel there's some evolution to your material as well. 
So can you talk about how you've evolved as a comedian, as an artist from back in 1982 to today? What, what's different and what's, what's the same? Well, I'm significantly older. So, uh, <laughs> but as you know, we've, funny, as we've once said, in a while, as attractive <laughs> though, while, <laughs> yes, still hanging in there. I've seen that clip of the, my first tonight show, which was, you know, hugely significant. That was when you do your first tonight show mm-hmm. with Johnny Carson. Yeah. Back in the day, there, I, I'm aware that many people under 30 might not know Johnny Carson's name, but at the time he was the gold standard and yeah. you weren't oh, yeah. a comedian uh, in earnest until you have that, you know, accomplishment. And people would say, what do you do? Oh, I'm a comedian. You've been on the tonight show? Not yet. Well, then you're not a comedian. So that was really, so it was you know, a huge benchmark. Having said that, when I watch it, you know, if I've seen it recently, I kind of cringe because I, I don't, I don't remember being nervous. I remember being animated and excited, Yeah. but everybody had told me, make sure you slow down. Cause you're going to be so, you know, so much adrenaline, make sure you slow down. So I watched it. I was so slow. <laughs> I was almost going backwards. It was like, uh, Oh my God. It was, it was, so I cringe a little whenever I see anything old of mine. And then someone said, well, that's good. Cause what you don't want to do is look back and go, Boy, was I good back then. Right. And now right. less yeah. so. No, you want you want your trajectory to go that way. So I think of myself as I like to think that I'm a better writer, better performer mm-hmm. um, than I was 40 years ago. And a lot of that has to do with just knowing yourself. You know, yeah. um, when you're 25, 26, in my case, I don't know that I had that much to say. You know, sure. you can talk about your parents, you can talk about, gee, you ever notice this difference between LA and New York? Mm-hmm. Gee, you know, it's just not. Uh, yeah. You're not as evolved at 25. Yeah. When you've lived life and you've been in a relationship or two and you've had children and you've, you've seen life, you know yourself better, you know the world better. Um, so uh, I, I like to think that reflects in my comedy. And as I say, you know, and also what happens at this point, having been on TV and doing, you know, Mad About You was a big hit. We were in people's homes and yeah. people's living rooms uh, for, for many years. So there's an intimacy. So when I go out, and I didn't anticipate this, but when I went back on, I hadn't been out doing comedy for a long time. I really, from like 92 to like 2010, 11, yeah. I just hadn't gone out. And when I did go out, I was really uh, warmed and, and heartened to see there was a relationship. And the people, you know, when you walk out, they go, oh, we know this guy. Yeah, you, you're our friend. And I, and yeah, and I'm looking at them like, well, I know you guys, you bought a <laughs> ticket. You must, we already must have something in common. Yeah. So it was uh, there and it does, it, I got to say it going on stage feels like getting together with old friends, you know, and it's, yeah. it's a great feeling. Was it hard to get back out there after such a long time, not being uh, in the stand up realm? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in, in many ways it was familiar, mm-hmm. good and bad, you know, uh, um, somebody said, is it like riding a bike? I said, no, it's like pushing a bike up a hill with your eye. It, it, like it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not uh, comfortable right away. Yeah. And uh, it's so, you know what I liken it to? It, it's, you know, now, by the way, if I take off a month mm-hmm. or two weeks, I feel like, Oh, I got to get the cobwebs off. So 20 years, I really was mad about you. And then mad about you was over and had kids mm-hmm. and I was happy to just be home and not out there. Mm-hmm. So when I went back into the comedy club, it, it, in my head, I knew how to do it, but the muscles are not there. It's like if, you're, if you play basketball with any kind of level of skill and you don't play for a few years, you still know how to do it, but sure. the muscles are not firing. Yeah. Uh, and you have to develop, redevelop those atrophied muscles. So it took a good year till I felt confident to go out and, and, you know, and do it for real. Yeah. Do you find the same thing true with music um, in terms of when after you maybe you stop for a while you go back and do it because now we're going to go back to my first point and that is you are quite a musician (laughs) and how often do you get a chance to practice play perform as a musician as well i i play all the time i play every day you know and and um but, you know, not with any particular goal. I sure. can't say I'm sitting and practicing and it's getting better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I but in the same way that, you know, you hopefully grow as a comic. And I think, you know, I, I studied classical music in college and mm-hmm. 
I, when I, when I attack something new or approach something new now, I think I do it with a little bit more of an eye and appreciation yeah. or, or, and a standard. It's like, okay, you know what? That might've been fine when you were 22, but that it should sound better now. Yeah. You, right. you know, you know more. So you, so, uh, I work a little harder, but it's always been really for my own enjoyment. I've never really played much uh, at all. It's funny. I, um, I had this, it's, it's vaguely, it's music connected. Yeah. I, I helped, um, Michael McDonald has a new memoir coming out and he's an old friend and, and I used to pester him with questions. I never really understood about yep. his career. I said, well, how would you, how could you be with the Doobie brothers and Steely Dan? And he would tell me and then I'd forget. So <laughs> I jokingly said, well, you should write a book. And he said, I've thought about it, but I don't know how you write a book. I said, well, let's do it. So anyway, so we wrote and we'll play together and, you know, which is a thrill for me because it's, it's Michael McDonald. Right. Well, yes, right. He sounds like Michael McDonald when he sings. <laughs> um, and so I really, uh, so we, we did a little thing. We played a couple of songs together and uh, at a little pop-up place. And uh, it was a thrill for me. It's like my rock and roll fantasy. And I'm going. So I, I read somewhere. Awesome. I feel like that was almost serendipitous for your life a little bit. Because I read somewhere, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the only sheet music that you ever bought was <laughs> What a Fool Believes. Is that Where did true? I say that? I, that's, that's totally true. I can't believe I said that in an interview. I believe you I said it in a uh, People Magazine interview is where I think <laughs> oh, you said Oh, about with, in the interview with Michael. Yeah. yeah. And I had totally forgotten about it until we moved a few years ago, and I unearthed it. I went, oh, my God. It was because I can play pretty much by ear. Yep. Which I used to think was good until I got to college and a teacher said you know you just you just kind of bullshit and i went i know <laughs> uh and <laughs> you gotta read and i just like that I, my brain didn't do that well but I, but I could always pick up something by ear but that song was too chunky and i couldn't figure it out yeah. i went i don't know what the hell he's playing there so i you know went out and spent the dollar 75 or whatever it was <laughs> yeah, right. and i got i go oh it's a flat to a d flat oh i didn't see that coming um yeah so it was really it was really funny and my, he was over at the house we were playing together and i pulled it out and went here's you <laughs> and you owe me a dollar 75 so what was it you like owe me a dollar 75 right <laughs> What was it like to go through that process and write that book with someone that uh, was someone you looked you loved so much and became a friend, and then you're writing a book with them? What is that? What Not was just that like? became a friend, spent a dollar seventy five. Yeah, that's uh, right. You were I a client of his. <laughs> yes, I was a client. I was a paying customer. Yeah. Um, it was uh, remarkably easy and um, and joyful and 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 informative because I mm. when I said you should write a book I, I meant it in a very selfish way because like I want to read it I, I I'm such a fan and I never quite understood yeah, yeah. you know he's not he, he's sort of an anomaly there was there's not a lot of publicity he's one of these guys that's you know you t if I tell anybody I've worked on this book they're, oh we love Mike McDonald but do you know anything about him <laughs> not really not yeah. really and so I go so um it was easy because we had no, we just did it, you know, it was all on spec and we didn't know right. if it was going to even be anything. And sure. it was right at the start of uh, COVID, it was March, 2020. And just the timing of it was such that I said, we both just discovered Zoom and we both have no jobs. So <laughs> we got time, we have our <laughs> afternoons free. So for about a month or so, we would just like an hour a day, we'd do this. We'd be on Zoom and I'd ask him a qu all over the place. And he would tell a story and then I would, you know, it wasn't wasn't work. I was genuinely interested in mm -hmm. like, go back. What, what do you, so what do you mean? Ray Charles said, what to you? It's like, okay, that's going in the book. And I didn't have to write anything because it was all being recorded. Yeah. And then, you know, after about, you know, five or six weeks, we had, I don't know, 40, 45 hours of stuff. And I would just go through it and sort of put it, I, I just sort of put it in a rough, uh, chronology and then he would take it and he would write it and polish it up and then pass it to me and I would edit it a little bit and say what if we put this here so it was really a great collaboration and for me it was interesting because it was the first time I'd ever worked on something that I wasn't really involved in sure. you know, it's mm -hmm. like it's yeah. it's his book it's his story and I was you know you don't need to put my name on it I just want to read it yeah. Um, yeah. and uh so it was, it was, th that was, it was a great lesson also in that type of collaboration. He's a, 
you know, he's he's worked with so many people. He's such a great collaborator. Yeah. So that it was really easy and friendly. He trusted me and I had, you know, I had no skin in the game. It was just let's just do this and see if we like it. And yeah. luckily it came out well. That's cool. You you were you said you went into that with no ex, uh, no expectations, right? I, I I think I read that somewhere too and you kind of alluded to that just now. Yeah. How and why is it important or when you go into an art form or you go into creating something to temper your expectations in some <laughs> way, well, how, how yeah. does that help you guide what you do? You know, the show is not called Curb Your Enthusiasm for nothing. Uh, <laughs> there, there was a lot of, a lot of curbing and expectation lowering that is part of the game. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think we all, we all do what we do in, in, you know, in, in TV and music, we do what we do because we didn't really have a choice. And that's just what came naturally. I, you yeah. know, I didn't become a comedian. When I started, that was my goal. I said, well, I want to be a comedian. I want to be on The Tonight Show. I didn't yeah. think about acting. I certainly didn't think about writing a book with Mike McDonald. Um, and, you know, it's because it's the worst game plan in the world. I'm going to throw every option away and just go to a club and uh, see if in 10 years I make any money. That's not a good plan that any parents are happy to sign off on. Um, so we do it because we love it and we're not ill-equipped to do anything else. So yeah. any kind of success is... Um, is sort of gravy. It's like, sure. mm -hmm. you know, we would have done it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and in this, like with the book, it's like, well, this is, it, it really was a fortuitous moment. It's like we have a lot of time and he was interested in doing it. I was interested in hearing it. And I said, well, let me, let me see if I can help you pull this story out. And, and he also had no expectations. And I think he was, he's been very pleasantly surprised that, you know, at a certain, at, our age, he's a few years older than me, but you know, you get to look back at your life and yeah. when you do something like write a memoir, it come it puts your it just gives you a perspective and you see sort of threads that you might not have known were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and you are like the perfect person to write that with him, with both your musical background and your storytelling abilities. I just think I think Well, just, it worked out well. It, yeah. it was an easy collaboration. And as I say, you know. It was, I was very clear this was his thing and I'm just yep. there to help him as a friend, but it, it really was fruitful for me, as I say, because I, I just learned a lot about that particular type of collaborating. And, and uh, you know, sometimes I would write something and he would just, I could see him hesitate. I go, you know what? That sounds like me. That doesn't sound like uh -huh. you. Take, take that out. Yeah. It's like, it's got to sound like you. That's fantastic. Now, yeah. you had mentioned that, you know, writing the book with him um, really just was like a joyful experience. Um, and you also kind of talked about music in that way. And I was curious of like writing a book, writing and doing stand up, music and acting. Are there any of those like what brings you the most joy? Mm. You know, they all bring me joy because there's no real reason to do it otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been lucky that I never really had to pick. I, I think on a day-to-day -day basis, there's nothing as much fun for me as doing stand-up. Yeah. You know, and, and George Carlin used to say, I perform for free. You just got to pay me to go through the airports. That's <laughs> like, that, like, that's never fun. Yeah. You know, the traveling in the hotels is not fun. <laughs> but when you get on stage, I've never, you know, I, I'd be hard-pressed to come up with a, uh, an example where it wasn't fun. Even yeah. if, on the rare occasion that it's terrible, in the back of my head, I'm going, oh, this is just funny how, how bad this is. Right. You know, so yeah. Once in a while, you do a, a, a corporate or a charity yeah. thing that's just... I was going to ask, what's just, your biggest bomb? It's not set up well. Yeah. You know, you know you, it all, it's always with the best of intention. You get there and you go, wait, they're eating dinner or it's after four hours of speeches. You know, things <laughs> that you wouldn't know. You want me to go on, you know, right after they just list the people who died in the community? That, that <laughs> now, now me? Okay. I didn't know that was going to be the, the timing of it. And then you just, in the back of your head, you go, this will be a funny story later. 
Right. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's funny too, because, you know, earlier you said something like, oh, well, you know, we're really ill-equipped to do other things. But then you think about it, it's like you're writing, you're doing stand-up, you're yeah. doing music, you're acting. There's so many Prolific things. Prolific in everything. Right. Yeah. And it just, and to be able to do that is like such a blessing and it's so cool. So I love yes, it. Yes, but I, I can't hang a picture without damaging a wall. <laughs> well, so, you know, we're I mean, all skill... talented in different ways. Yes. And luckily there are people who do that. I, I, my when wife... We were, Go ahead. My wife and I have, uh, whenever I try to hang something heavy on a wall, I have to find the stud because without fail, if I don't, even with those anchors that go into the wall, yeah. within yeah, three months, out. it will be pulling out of the wall. No, really? it's never. Yeah. We, we don't, certain guys just don't have that skill. And I, I wish I did. And I wish I had to pass on to my kids because they are, you know, they had no example. Um, um <laughs> But I, I'll tell you, this is how my wife and I talk about this all the time. Early on, when we were newly married and we got our first house, and our in the kitchen, the oven was not working. Mm -hmm. And we called the guy. That's our solution. Call the guy. What called the guy? There's always a guy. <laughs> and I wasn't home. And this is early in my career. Right? And the guy comes over and uh, fixes it in two seconds. He said, can I ask you, is your husband an actor? <laughs> And she said, yes, why? <laughs> How did you know that? He said, because you're paying me $50 to light the pilot. <laughs> so... Oh, okay. So that's how easy it was. <laughs> your, your husband must be an idiot actor. Oh, yes, in fact, he is. Wow. Uh, that is true. Um, all right. Now, let's play a game we're going to call Paul Said What? These are going to be lines from things you've done. Okay, mm. and mm. let's see if you can remember the movie or TV show they are from. I'll keep score, and you'll keep score, Paul. You'll keep score. I will tell you, you so once in a while, somebody will come over and do a line that I don't know is a line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, go ahead. Maybe this may be one of them. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, and if you want to share anything about else about the experience, go right ahead and. And you can t t share anything you want. So this one, there's going to be two lines from this one, okay? Oh, there's two God. lines from this one. And one of them is, you couldn't look fat if you wanted to. And the other line is, we never talk about that, if you're happy or if I'm happy. What is that? Is that from Bye Bye Love? It is. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Bye Bye Love. That is right. I used to love yeah. that movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and then you stopped loving No, I didn't stop. Yeah, what happened, Dominic? <laughs> Nothing happened. No, no, you know, I, I find a lot of people, people come over me often and, and who love that movie because their parents were divorced and somehow that really spoke to that dynamic of, you know, of, yeah. of divorce as being rough. But I'll tell you the line, and I it's probably... By the way, did you go and find these lines, or are these off the top of your head? How did, did I've you got them all memorized. I am such a Paul Reiser fan. No, I, I went wow. and I found all these lines. Okay, because I'll tell you, the one line that I get most frequently, there's, it was in Beverly Hills Cop 1, where I went in the locker room, and I go, hey, this is not my locker, and I walk off, the, which was an improvised line because I didn't know how to get out of that scene. I was talking to Eddie. Then the, the captain comes in and I had to not stand there like an idiot for four pages. So I went, how do I get, I said, Hey, there's not my locker. And literally I'm clearing the frame. You don't even see the back of my head. So it was a throwaway. And that's 40 years ago. People for years, people come over Still. and I didn't know what it was at first. People would come over and they would do a variation. I'd be in an airport and someone would go, Hey, that's not my suitcase. Go, oh yeah. No, it's my suit. No, you get it? I go, no, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, that so should be a TikTok right now. Like, just people saying, that's not my, and fill in the blank. Yeah, like, we need yeah to but bring that back. now I have a clue where they're going. <laughs> yeah. And it's very sweet if I knew what they were talking about. All right, let's go back in time, too. Yeah, give me another one. Here's I'm the other one. I'm a thousand. You know what your problem is? You don't chew your food. That's yeah. why you get so irritable. It's lumps. <laughs> you, you have, like, roast beef in your heart. It yeah. just stays there. That can only be. That is from Diner. Yes, that was my that was my first job. That yeah. was and that was all. All those diner scenes were improvised. I was going to ask. That was yeah. going to be my follow up because there is such genuine react when when yeah. that camera is on yeah. uh, the two of you. There is such genuine reaction. Is it Kevin Bacon next to you? Kevin Bacon and yeah. uh, that. Well, I'm talking to Steve Gutenberg. Yes, across from you. Yeah, and the, but, but uh, you know those those scenes. 
we shot, I think, five or six weeks. Uh-huh. And Barry Levinson, who that was his first movie, but he was pretty darn brilliant. He knew that it would pay off to shoot those scenes where we had the most camaraderie, shoot those last. So that was the last yeah. week. And we had all become comfortable with each other. And then he would, you know, just leave the cameras rolling. And, and just we, see what happened. For want of anything to say, we would just improvise. And, you know, and so uh, that's another one. People will come over and go, hey, are you going to finish that? I go, <laughs> I, know where, I know where that movie's from. You're like, gotcha, I know. Gotcha, I know. <laughs> go ahead. <clears throat> this one's pretty easy. I, I think this one's pretty easy. Uh, I'm an artsy, craftsy kind of guy. No idea. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I don't know. Is that, I, I, that is the Kaminsky method. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the scene where you first meet um, yes, of course. Sandy there. I, yes. And I just love that role to me is, wow, it is so powerful, mm-hmm. I think. It, it, first of all, you don't look like you um, no, thank at God. all. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, it's a little glimpse into my future. Yeah, there you go. Live, but, just a few years up the road. But you see a side of a human being with that role, which is so, you know, loving life, carefree. But then you see the multifaceted element to him as especially you get to the scene where he is in acting class and yeah. he is reflecting so genuinely and sincerely at life and and why he's there and it, it just it's pure and it just goes yeah, right it, back to the everything. It, it, it a beautiful beautifully written scene chuck Lorre wrote all those scripts and um that was uh it, it was a really fun character and you know part of what was fun about that they patted me up and made me bald and made me look older and you know uh part of the bonus of that was you threw away all your vanity because an actor, <laughs> yeah. you know, you get in your wardrobe and goes, this, sh- this shirt make me look fat. I go, wait a minute, you're fat. You're okay, you don't look good no matter what, you- it doesn't matter what the shirt is. So, so you throw all that out and it was very freeing to go, all right, so who is this guy? And this guy, I love that it, he, he was just not self-conscious. Everybody else was sort of snicker. Yeah. You know, he was a little bit of a, 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 a goofball. But he didn't feel that way. And then yeah. that scene in that he wrote in the in the acting class, you know, brought back doing it was very uh, brought back a lot of sense memories because we've all been in acting classes yeah. and you get up and you reveal yourself and you don't know what you're going to. And there's suddenly just the fact that it's quiet and everyone's talking, everyone's looking at you and you're the only one talking and you're sort of encouraged to dig deeper and dig deeper. Um, it was, it was, you know, it was, again, it was sort of easy to do that in that environment. It, fe- it just yeah. felt like an acting class. You said sense memory. Did you study Stanislavski? Emotional memory recall? Is that where that comes uh, from? No, I didn't. I wasn't that serious a student, but I, I had been in acting classes where you do, yep. I, you know, I imagine the, the guys that I studied with were third generation from yeah. Stanislavski. But, you know, those kind of, but yes, yeah, it's sense memory and it's, it's, yeah. It's all about stripping away stuff that you don't need sure. and your, you know, your self-consciousness and stuff and getting as open. And then you yeah. put stuff on that's of the character. But, you know, that scene was just all about being stripped, <laughs> stripped uh, uh, of your veneer and, and uh, probably saying things that he had never said out loud. Yes. Which was yeah, that internal monologue coming written. out. Yeah, right. it was it's yeah. just and, and well portrayed as well. Um, okay. All right. Uh, what do you think the evil wanted? <laughs> Was I in Halloween? No. What is that? There, uh, could be a couple, <laughs> there honestly is could that, be a couple options with that one. Is that, is that, what do you think the evil wanted? I don't know. What's Stranger that, Things. Stranger that things. was from oh, oh, Stranger oh, oh, Things. Of course. <laughs> what do you think the evil... You know what? It's from, those are so... And the commitment, they're sort of newer in my yes, head. So yeah. I, I'm overlooking them. I'm going back too Well, far. and Dominic didn't really do it in the right voice. You know? No, he I know. Dominic is, hold, <laughs> Dominic is holding us back. Do you feel that? I, I think he's holding us back. Right. Yeah, my it, we're both suffering. Yeah, that's it. You are, <laughs> you're both suffering from this. Yes. <laughs> Let's stay in that vein. I mean, that's the hint. Let's stay in that vein. I think personally for you, it would be the best thing in the world to get out there and face <laughs> this thing. 
get back on the horse. <laughs> yes, that's that's alien. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> that is. Right, uh, that one, that one is, <laughs> how did, how you know, it says, it says Joseph Anderson on your screen. I realize that's not you at all. <laughs> that's my tech Joseph, director. <laughs> Frankie, like who you is, know, it, who is real here? I was here? I knew it was Dominic, but it said Joseph. It's all right, I'm not Frankie, so everybody's lying. Go ahead. <laughs> that one kind of uh, departs from what people typically know, know Paul yeah. Reiser for. Would you agree or disagree with that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. There's no other... <laughs> Yes, I'm generally not uh, in the future or in space. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're, we're, there's, we, there's a, uh, a Marvel comic book coming out next month, in a couple of weeks, actually. It's, it's a, like a what if, and it's uh -huh. what if oh, yeah. Carter Burke had lived. And somebody pitched that idea. I said, that's so funny. Because I have for 35 years been saying, you know, people say, well, how, how, how did you feel playing a bad guy? And I always would joke. I said, well, you say bad. I say misunderstood. <laughs> and it's true. We found a way to actually put that story forth. So it's really funny. It's yeah. 30 X five, seven years later <laughs> that this character is going to be explored in a new way wow. in a comic book form, which is really, you know, it's hard yeah. to mess up a comic book. I, I'm not even in it, you know, I'm sitting at home <laughs> reading it. Perhaps it could become perform. an animated series and your voice could be, uh, be cool. lent to that, huh? I'm open. I got nothing to do. <laughs> uh, I assume you have some sort of transportation. Got a skateboard, pogo stick, big boy bike. That sounds familiar. What is that? That is from, so let, let me give you a hint, right? I understand you bike. also like yeah. your, your uh, one of your pastimes is tennis. Is that correct? Yeah. And so might there have been if something. Oh, yes. Okay. So it was Red Oaks. Red, Red Oaks. Oaks. That's got right. It. Ding, ding, That's ding. Right. You got that one right, right there. Okay. Um, all right. Here's our, here's our last one for us. Okay. Same. This is now, now I want you to think all the way forward. Don't think backwards. Okay. This is something I'm going to say tomorrow. Uh, maybe okay. so. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't get arrested again. <laughs> so that is uh, from the trailer of Beverly Hills Cop 4. That's right. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see it, but I got the trailer and I was able to see yes, that. Yes, I haven't seen it either. That's all I've seen <laughs> is the trailer. Well, we've got a surprise for you. We're going to roll the whole movie right now for you. you get, no, wow, no. what a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic and I are actually going to act it all out for how, what we think it would oh, look like. Oh, that'll be beautiful. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Jenna will obviously be better than I will. <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining yes, us. Thank Paul you. Reiser a will be at the uh, Batavia Fine Arts Center on March the 8th. Yes. Some limited tickets are still available. Some very few are still available. You can Come get those out. at BataviaFineArtsCenter.org. That's mm -hmm. center spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. -E, e, because, because we're fancy. That's right, Jenna. Thank you so much. I've been <laughs> Dominic. I'm Jenna. And thank you for listening while we, we talk, talk to, to Paul Reiser. Reiser. We Talk is a production of BFAC On Air.